Hi everybody. Um, in this lecture, I'd like to discuss the lens maker's equation and have a little focus, if you'll pardon the pun, on diverging lenses. So let me jump right in and introduce you to the lens maker's equation. It says that 1 over the focal length of the lens is equal to n minus 1 times 1 over r1 minus 1 over r2. Now let me explain all the variables. Of course, that's the focal length, as I said. n is the index of, the ref of refraction of the material that you make the lens out of. r1 and r2 are the radii of curvature of either side of the lens, so of course they can be different. r1 is the radius of curvature of the lens on the near side of whatever object you're trying to look at. And R2 is the radius of curvature of the lens on the far side of whatever object you're trying to look at. The lens maker's equation allows you to design and craft a lens with a specific focal length, which is, of course, essential if you're trying to design something for a specific application or someone's eyeglasses or something like that. So let's talk about the sign conventions of all of these elements in the lens maker's equation. R1 and R2, which are the radius of curvature on the near and the far side of the object, those things are going to be positive if they're convex towards the object, okay? So that means that if the lens bulge, bulges toward the object, then that's a positive radius of curvature. And they're going to be negative if they're concave towards the object, okay? So if they bulge away from the object, then that's concave towards the object. Okay. Now, when you solve the lens maker's equation, you get the focal length. And so the focal length f can be either positive or negative. Now, this can be a little confusing because usually when you draw your array diagrams for the thin lenses, you draw a focal length on either side of the lens. And so students get confused about that. But there is a sign convention for the focal length. f is positive if it's a converging lens. And that means, of course, that if it's fatter in the middle, then it's positive. And f is negative if it's a diverging lens. So f is negative if it's thinner in the middle than it is at either edge. Now s prime is the distance from the uh, opt or from the image to the center of the lens. S is the distance from the center of the lens to the object. S is always positive. But s prime can be either positive or negative. S prime is positive if it's a real image, which means it's on the opposite side of the lens from the object, okay? And S prime is negative if it's a virtual image, and virtual images are on the same side of the lens as the object. So let's look at um, the stereotypical diverging lens, okay? Let's look at that one. In the last lecture where we covered um, <clears throat> the thin lens equation, I spent a lot of time talking about converging lenses, which are fatter in the middle. And so I'd like to do some examples and talk a little bit more about diverging lenses in this lecture. Okay? Now, what I've got here is an image of a diverging lens, and the object would be this green arrow. Okay? So what I want to talk about here is the lens maker's equation that we just introduced and some of the, um, some of the conventions there, and then solve for what the focal length would be for um, a diverging lens that has this stereotypical look. Okay, so remember, convex towards the object means that the radius of the circle, which would have to create the lens shape, is on the opposite side of the object. And that would mean that the lens is bulging towards it. Okay, so if my hand is the object and the lens is here, right, this curve is the lens, then of course the radius, uh, the center of the circle would have to be over here which would be on the opposite side as the object, okay? So convex towards the object means that it bulges towards the object, which means that the center of the circle would have to be over here. Okay, concave towards the object means that the circle would have to be on the same side. So if here's the um, object and here's the lens, this is concave towards it, and of course the radius of the circle would have to be over here some, somewhere. So you can see here that since our object is this green arrow, then R1, which is the radius of curvature on the near side, right, that's concave, so it would be negative. But R2, which is the radius of curvature on the far side, that would mean that the radius or the center of the circle would have to be on the far side from the object. So that's convex. So that makes the radius of curvature R2 
positive. Now, if you need to pause the video for a second and make sure that you understand, do so now. Okay, so in this lens, I'm gonna plug in some sample numbers and we solve for the focal length. In this lens, the radii look like they're about the same, okay? So let's assume that we have radius of curvature for either side that have magnitudes of 10 centimeters for both, okay? Now, of course, one's positive and one's negative, but the magnitude is the same. So we're going to assume an index of refraction for our lens material of about 1.5, which is pretty typical range of values there. And we're going to plug into the lens maker's equation. So we're going to solve for the focal length f. So here we have 1 over f, and that's equal to n minus 1 times 1 over r1 minus 1 over r2. Now r1 is negative, so we're plugging in 1 over f is equal to 1.5 minus 1 times negative 1 over 10 centimeters minus 1 over 10 centimeters. All right. So when I solve for that, of course, the minus 1 over 10 minus 1 over 10, I get minus 2 over 10. And so I have 1 over f is 1.5 minus 1, which is 0.5, or a half, times minus 2 over 10 centimeters, and that equals minus 1 over 10 centimeters. And so my focal length, f, is negative 10 centimeters. Now remember, the negative sign just means it's a diverging lens. So this is how you solve for a focal length or a focal point, right, that gives you uh, a negative number here, and that indicates the diverging lens. So a lot of students find it confusing. I just want to emphasize this so that you, you aren't one of those students, okay? A lot of students find it confusing that the focal length is defined as positive or negative because we draw it on either side of the lens. But to be perfectly clear, diverging lenses are going to have negative focal lengths, and converging lenses are going to have positive focal lengths. So here's some examples. We drew the stereotypical shapes of the lenses, and you kind of think of, uh, say, A here in the converging lenses as being the stereotypical shape, but of course you might also see any of these shapes here. Shape C might be something that you would see, for example, in glasses. Um, and then here we have diverging lenses, and this is the stereotypical shape D here, but there's also either of these other shapes that would also be a, di a diverging lens. So the only requirement for converging lenses is, of course, thin, that they're thin for the thin lens equations, but converging lenses are going to be fatter in the middle, okay? And they're going to have positive focal lengths, and diverging lenses are thinner in the middle, and they should have negative focal lengths. So if you look at a picture of a lens and you get the stats or whatever, and you start working the problem, it doesn't conform to those, um, to those ideas there that you hold. You did something wrong, and you need to go back and take another look. So let's do an example problem with a diverging lens. We have a one centimeter tall object that's 60 centimeters in front of a diverging lens that has a focal length of minus 30 centimeters. So calculate the image position and height. Is the image real or virtual, upright or inverted? And then draw the ray diagram. Okay, so here's our thin lens equation that we covered in the last lecture. If you haven't watched that lecture yet, you really should go back and watch it. So here we have uh, 1 over s plus 1 over s prime is equal to 1 over f, okay? So here, of course, s is the object distance, s prime is the image di distance, and f is the focal length. So plugging into that with the values that we have from the problem, the object distance was 60 centimeters, and it was a diverging lens with a focal length of uh, minus 30 centimeters. So plugging those numbers in, we have 1 over 60 centimeters plus 1 over s prime is equal to negative 1 over 30 centimeters. <laughs> now solving for s uh, prime, we just do a little bit of simple algebra here, and we end up with 1 over s prime is minus 1 over 30 centimeters minus 1 over 60 centimeters is equal to negative 3 over 60 centimeters. And then solving for that, we would end up with s prime is equal to minus 20 centimeters. Okay? So that negative sign, of course, that means it's a virtual image and it's on the same side as the object, okay? So we can now go ahead and solve for the magnification. Remember in the last lecture where we covered the thin lens equations and the magnification equations, the magnification m was equal to minus s prime over s. So that's minus minus 20 centimeters divided by 60 centimeters. The minus signs cancel out and you end up with one third. So the image is upright because the magnification is positive, and the height of the image should be about one-third the height of the object, or 0.33 centimeters, 
if the, if the object height was one centimeter. So let's go through the ray diagram here. <clears throat> the height isn't to scale because I can't draw something that's 30 centimeters long and one high um, and have it look at all decent on a slide. So that's not to scale, okay? But I tried to make the focal lengths um, a half of the object distance to make, it, uh, to make it as much to scale as I possibly could. Okay, now here um, I have drawn the actual light rays in black and I've drawn my back tracing, um, I'm sorry, I've drawn my back tracing in blue, okay? So remember you have your three special rays. The easiest one to remember and the easiest one to draw, by the way, is the one that goes from the top of your object, which I've indicated here as an arrow, which is pretty typical for me because I can't draw. Um, but anyway, it goes from the top of your object through the center of the lens and then straight. So that's one of the special rays that I've drawn there. And so there it goes that way. Okay. <clears throat> the next one is if a ray comes from the object and goes parallel to the optical axis, which is that um, axis that is perpendicular to the plane of your lens, okay? So if it goes um, parallel to that optical axis and then it hits the center of the lens, it will diverge for a diverging lens. And if you do um, the back tracing of the ray, what would be is it would go through the focal point on the back side. Okay, so that's this top ray here. I've drawn it parallel to the optical axis, and then it goes off and it diverges. But I took a ruler, a straight edge, and I lined it up so that where it intersected the lens and the focal point on the near side, it makes a straight line from there. And then I did the back tracing of that ray in blue so you could see um, what's happening on the, back, on the near side of the lens. Okay, and then finally, if you have a ray, um, you aim it like it's going to go straight through the focal point on the far side. Okay, so that's this ray right here. And then instead of having it actually go through the focal point, it's um, refracted. And so if it's heading towards the focal point, it'll be refracted such that it's parallel to the optical axis on the far side. Okay, so it's a diverging lens. So you can see that the actual light rays on the far side of the lens all go in crazy directions. But if you do the back tracing of the rays onto the near side, you can see that they intersect. And the intersection point is that image point right there. And then that becomes the top of your arrow where you traced your rays from. Okay. And so there's my little image of my arrow. I've indicated it in blue. And it's on the same side of the uh, lens as the object, which makes it a virtual image. And you can see that it's demagnified. And I even kind of got the height right. I'm not the best artist in the world um, or drafter, by the way. So I um, did my best here, but there you have it. Okay. Well, I hope um, that that helped, and um, I'll see you around.